לא יונה בלי שאני שומע יזכור לאדוני שם רך, אדוני שם רך, אדוני שם רך, יונה ממש שמיש לא יעקר כל ירח בה, לא אלו אדוני ישמור מכל רוי איש מרי שם שרחו, אדוני ישמור צי יזכור ויחו מעטו ועד אוילום. פרנדס, תק שם צדוקר תורדין, אם ירצו שם ויטיס צדוקר, we're gonna enter into the geula right now. Let's hear the shoifer, and hopefully we'll hear the shoifer of Moshiach. In the meantime, let's hear one blast, the reminder of month of Elul. And now a little Var Torah. In 1943, Tov the Rebbe wrote what's called the Hayom Yom. Hayom Yom is a daily, is a calendar, Hayom Yom meaning day by day, a thought taken from the teachings of the previous Rebbe and a thought for the day, your personal calendar. Many amazing thoughts, uh, brief, but they have tremendous depth and tremendous width and tremendous teaching. In the one from yesterday, the Rebbe writes the following. He writes it in Hebrew, but I will translate it in English as a way of introduction. The Rebbe talks about the four names with which mankind is called. We know Adam, Ish, Enosh, and Gever. Let me just preface. Adam, as we know, Adam or Rishon. God named the first human being with the name Adam. Ish, we find by Moshe Rabbein as an example. Voha Ish Moshe, the man Moshe. <laughs> Excuse me. Enosh was a grandson of Adam. Adam says Enosh. So man is called with the name Enosh also. And then we have the word Gever. In fact, in Israel, they're very fond of saying Ata Gever, your man. We find a Pasuk in Tehillim for that matter. Me Hashem de Gever. From God comes the steps of Gever. So we have those four names. Adam, Ish, and Noish, Gever. And the Rebbe in the Sayyam Yoim explains what it means. And we'll see how it's related to the time period now in the month of Elul. So the Rebbe says, in describing the unique qualities of humankind, four terms are used. Adam, says the Rebbe, this refers to the quality of mind and intellect. To Chochma. Ish refers more to the quality of heart and emotion. And Noish is the term represents weakness in either intellect or emotion, or for that matter, maybe even in both. Finally, Gever, which according to Kabbalah refers, comes from the concept of Gvura, strength, represents who overcomes inner weakness and removes obstacles and hindrances to the attainment of the intellectual or emotional quality. Says the Rebbe, that means that Gever works upon Enoish to elevate Enoish to the plane of Ish and Adam. And the Rebbe concludes, since it is possible to turn Enoish into Ish or Adam, it is obvious that Enoish already possesses, although in a hidden manner, the qualities found in Ish and Adam. Because if Enoish wouldn't have at all those qualities, the potential, you can't change it. You can't make an animal, so to say, into a human being, because it doesn't have the potential for it. Make it a better animal, but not a human being. So the fact that Enosh can become Ish and Adam 
and have the qualities of both is a sign that even the one who is of what represents the weakest link, the weakest representation of the human has a potential to reach the highest. Which is obviously a clear message to us now, the month of Elul. The month of Elul where we do our personal inventory, it teaches us not to get desperate. Oh, I'm only I've, I'm extremely weak. Gever. You can be the gever. You have the strength. All you need to do is, as I like to say, put on your Nike shoes. Just do it. Improve. And this way, talking about Nike shoes, their symbol is like a flying thing. Let's all fly into the Gola with Moshiach right now.